I'm gonna cue this pornography up. activate the brain, and it turns out that it's like everywhere. Just about every lobe of the brain is associated with sexual arousal, and and in some way, you know, you can get visual cortex stimulation, auditory cortex stimulation, imagination, emotional engagement. So every part of the brain, dopamine, is involved in pornography. And then the other thing that pornography is really good at is is really shutting off our negative emotional circuitry. Sex is really important. And so our brain is willing to push everything else away mm -hmm. in order to have sex and procreate. So it's, it's incredibly effective at really suppressing our negative emotional circuitry. And what we tend to see in any addictive behavior is that it gives pleasure and it takes away pain. A lot of people who watch pornography don't necessarily with it. Mm -hmm. So I've had, um, you know, people that I've worked with that what? will like just be watching it <laughs> while they're like doing work, like on a second screen, mm -hmm. because it somehow sends those signals to the brain to like suppress our negative emotional circuitry. So it's a, it's a really weird kind of beast. Welcome back to the Rena Malik MD podcast. I'm your host, uh, Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon. Today, our guest is Dr. Alok Kanoja. He's a Harvard trained psychiatrist with a tremendous social media platform that reaches millions of people with online educational content. His expertise is in mental health and technology, and he's co founded the Healthy Gamer platform that coaches thousands of people on healthy gaming. Today, we talked about screen addiction, as well as porn addiction. What is porn addiction? Who gets affected by it? And how you can do Okay, put, uh, put, uh, let me get this back up here. There we go. Okay, now you know who the players are. Okay, so you've got, uh, what's her name again? Uh, there we go. Oh, Malik, uh, Rena Malik, MD, Dr. Rena Malik. And then we got uh, Dr. K here. I can't, I'm not gonna even try to pronounce his last name. This guy is a, I, uh, they bill him as an evolutionary psychiatrist. Uh, I've seen some of his stuff. Oh, okay, here it is. Dr. Alok Kanogia. That's why they call him Dr. K. I guess it's easier to say that. Um, so he, I've, I've seen this guy make the rounds. I know he's been on uh, Chris Williamson's show. I've, I've seen him talking around. Now, there's. I'm not going to show you the whole damn thing. There's only one real salient part in here that I want to get to because there's a lot to sort of deconstruct, and I wanted to riff on this just a little bit. So uh, let's put this back up here, and let me scrub through. I want to. It's right around the 40 mark. Or 42, 43. Uh, so I'll just do it at the 40 mark. Here we go. This was the part that I wanted to dig into. Now I'm going to uh, stop and start. I'm going to riff on this just a little bit because it's it's pertinent to the caca thing, and uh, also the um, pretty much the pre like the base premises of um, social matching theory. So, or social matching, um, what you call it, uh, mate switching hypothesis. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, if you can help someone have a reason not to watch pornography and in the middle of the day, then that will help them a lot. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, uh, this is my population, but like, you know, these are people who are oftentimes young men in their 20s, and they're like falling behind in some way. And Wait, hold up, it's uh, actually 43. Hang on, let me push this up. Just I'm, I'm a little bit early. Okay, I think this is, is it 43? I think it's 4306. so fucking hard to do this okay okay that, there we go that'll work access pornography and then they're like you know they're still not connecting with other people they're, they're using pornography because they still feel bad of course we talked about the cycle a little bit but is it sort of like are these things contributing to that when you say these things what do you mean like meaning are we seeing people get porn addiction because they're either having stress in their life so say they're not coupled with somebody say they are trying to meet people but they're having difficulty because i think the dating the dating world has changed right with okay i'm gonna stop this real here real quick here notice the language here they're not coupled with anybody the goal state is to be coupled is to be in a one-on-one -on -one monogamous relationship it's not it's not about it's not about like oh they need to be dating a lot they need to be spinning plates they need to be like the, the goal state the presumptive goal state is they need to be need should be coupling so keep that in mind because that's going to play in for the rest of this that the point i'm making here is with that coupling thing is exactly the same fucking premise where they ask the wrong 
questions when it comes to mate switching hypothesis. Dating apps and how people communicate and meet each other. It's very different from when you and I were younger. And so um, I think that is is a very different, different sort of place to navigate. Like women are looking for a certain kind of man. And if you don't fill that category, you are immediately filtered out, right? So women are dating the top five, 10% of men are trying to aim for them. And, and then there's a, like a lot of men who are not having success in meeting women. Yeah. So, so it sounds like you have. All right. So there's some jump cuts in there. So I just want to point that out just so you can see. Um, the other thing is like, he's about to, he's going to try to dispel the top 10% myth all like he, he, this is the same kind of guy who's going to get like the 80 20 rule wrong uh, again. Um, but uh, I think what's interesting is that she's talking about how like men must qualify as a top 5%, top 10% man, like a high value man in the top 10th percentile. I hope I'm saying that right. People gave me shit about that last time. In the top 10%, top. Four and a half percent really is what it ought to be, according to Dr. David Buss, and according to like most of these guys, four and a half percent of men are uh, only worth responding to on. This is on dating apps, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna clarify some things about that as well. Um, but the the idea is still premised on one thing: they should be coupling, they should be one on one. It should be one boy, one girl, and that's it. It's never about multiple like have like like dating like a fucking adult right like i i love how people want to say well you've got to pick the right girl you've got to vet for the right girl you just made the wrong choice how are you supposed to do that if you're only if you're wanted one at a fucking time most guys don't vet women whatsoever most guys can't afford to take the time it would they would need they don't have the sexual opportunity to vet women because they just don't have any other woman to compare the the one that they might be considering, the one that they're vetting. They don't have other sexual opportunities to say, you know what, uh, Becky's really good, but Jen's really hot too, and Susan over here, she's okay too, and and you know Karen over here, I was thinking about fucking her too, but uh, I'm I, you know vetting all of them. I think Becky's the one. That never fucking happens because we we discourage anything that it would even look like would look like the bachelor, right? <laughs> would look like some one of one of these fucking fantasies, right? Most men do not, they live in a state of sexual scarcity. So to expect them to pick better or to choose better or to be better, they they are fucking breeders of opportunity. You have to be because you don't know when your next meal is coming, sexually speaking. You don't know when the next opportunity for you to fuck is going to come along because most guys don't fuck. Most guys aren't attractive to be guys who fuck. Simple as that. The theory that that's at play, and I think that's completely reasonable. So let's just play around with that a little bit. So the first thing is that, you know, this idea that women are dating the top five to 10% of men, I assume you're talking about like Tinder statistics. Yeah. Like those, I mean, cause that's where you can filter by height and by, you yeah, know. Yeah. So I think that the, the, there's a couple of interesting, like once you really look at the data, which I don't know if you have, but I'm, I'm mm -hmm. sure, you know, anyone who's trained in statistics. So when, when they say they're dating the top 10% of men, there's this idea that one dude is dating like nine women. Whereas that. Okay. No. So he's going to, I'm going to just cut him off here because I know what he's going to, I know it's coming up. You probably know what's coming up next. Okay. No, Dr. Alok. Um, it's not about who's dating. It's about who they want to date. It's about who they would consider dating, who they would consider fucking. And we really need to put it in those terms. I know it's vulgar, but you need to put it out. Who are they fucking? Who are they having sex with? Not who are they going to get married to? Not who are they coupling with? Not who are they going to be in a long-term relationship? Who do they want to fuck? The top 10% of guys. And I would even go so far as to say the top 4.5% of guys. They want to fuck Justin Waller. They want to fuck Jack Reacher. They want to fuck Jason Momoa. You know who they don't want to fuck? They don't want to fuck a guy like Kaka. 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 <laughs> they don't want to fuck that guy. He's too perfect. He's not, it, what's, what gets me is like, if you go and like, remember what I was saying about how, uh, how Myron and, uh, Andrew Wilson were talking about like, what is a, you know, a high value guy. Remember that part where Myron said, you don't necessarily have to be fucking a lot of women to be a high value guy. Case in point. Kaka. 
He's a high value guy. He's a, arguably one of the highest value motherfuckers there is. Women don't want to fuck him. He's too perfect. They don't because he has no alpha fucks side. He has no machismo. He has no fucking lust value. He's hot. They want to get with him. He's cute. He's, I wouldn't necessarily say the dude's hot and no homo, but the guy is, uh, he, he's good looking. Don't get me wrong, but he's not as good looking as like Ronaldo. <laughs> he's not as good looking as like Jason Momoa or, or any of these, like you name an actor, right? He doesn't inspire like visceral, uncontrollable lust, but the dude is high value. Very much so. You could make the same case for Jeff Bezos or like, uh, I'm trying to think, of, you name a rich, fat, ugly guy. They don't inspire visceral lust, but they definitely are high value. They're men that other men want to be, at least in some respect. But here's the problem that he, he's going to run into is the fact that there's a difference between, oh, the top, ten, let's just give him the 10%. The top 10% of guys, women are, those 10% of guys are dating hundred percent of the women or 80 percent of the women which is the absolute bonehead wrong deliberately misconstrued um conflated bullshit about the 80 20 this is why the red pill's wrong the 80 20 rule no they want to fuck that guy that doesn't mean there are they would like to hell a hundred percent of women would like to fuck the top four and a half percent of men they would like to do that they have desire and arousal and I want to get with those guys. Are they? No, of course not. The average woman today is 168 pounds, 5'9", and looks like a fucking beach ball. Does she want to fuck Jason? Does she want to fuck Jason Momoa? Yes, she absolutely wants to fuck Jason Momoa. Is she fucking that guy? No, she's not. And the problem is that it's about the market perception of the market of the sexual marketplace, because we're going to talk about it in economic terms here. It doesn't matter. Top, top 10%. They want to fuck the top 10%. Are they? No, of course they're not. But that top 10% guy has his pick of who he wants to fuck. Absolutely. But he's not, they're not all banging that one guy. They're not all, he's not dating all those top girls, right? Because there's only one of them to go around. I mean, statistically, I mean, just the law of averages that they couldn't possibly happen. But the, the fact of the matter is it's not, it's not about what is actually happening. It's what's potentially could be happening, which I could potentially get this guy, even though they can't. That's not usually what happens. Right. So if you look at something like Tinder, it's like a seven to nine men to one woman like ratio. So when they say they're dating, it's still oftentimes one dude is dating one guy, or maybe people are kind of at the top, but like well, there's such a lopsided gender ratio that it's still like closer to one to one mm -hmm. in, in some ways. It depends on the studies that you look at and stuff like that. So I think that this creates this idea that a lot of men have that like, oh my God, there's like these chads at the top that are like banging lots of girls. Yeah. I don't think the reality is quite like that when you. No, but they are banging the girls that they would want to fuck. They are, ta they're licking the ice cream. They're taking the top shelf. They're taking the ones that they want to be fucking. And you know, here's the thing is notice the language. Notice how the, how we've twisted this. The chads are fucking the women. No, no, no. The fucking women are fucking the chad because he is the scarce resource. It's not the guy going, yeah, look at all that. I'm going to go fuck this chick tonight. And uh, no, they, the only reason they can do that is because women slide into their DMS and initiate with those guys. Notice the, the, the context of the, of, of the presumptions here. The presumption is it's this fiendish, manipulative, dark triad Chad that is fucking all these women. Oh, no, that's simply not happening, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter if it's happening or not. Women want to fuck that guy. That's all that matters. It's not the actual sex that's happening. It's the potential. It's the hope for. It's the want. It's the perception that it could happen. That's what it's about because that influences all the chicks who are like eights and nines. That influences all the girls who are seven, sixes, fives, fours, threes, twos, and zeros. Okay. All of them think that every, women online believe that they're at least two, maybe three steps ahead ab above what their actual sexual market value is. So with that in mind, and you've got these, uh, you've got higher, higher end women. And those men are getting with those with the, the higher end women as well. But those women are convincing lesser women that they could be could potentially be getting with these guys. That's what dissuades women from from getting with a guy who from a seven 
getting with another seven. Or if she gets with a seven, that seven, that guy has to have value added. That's where he's got to have a good job. He's got to love his mother. He's got to want puppy dogs. He's got to want kids. He's got to like Disneyland and rainbows. Okay. He has to have all of this value added, uh, you know, features and qualities. So it can make up for the fact that he's not the top 10% guy that she really, really wants to fuck. How do I know that? Because your grandmother went to go see Aquaman. Your grandma and your ugly kid sister and your, you know, the, the fat average house frau in America all wanted to go see fucking Aquaman. Not because it's a, they're fans of the DC comic character. They went because they wanted to see that they went. They reason why they get off on, 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 uh, what was it on Twilight? The reason they get off on uh, 50 Shades of Grey, the reason they get off, even get off on the fucking Tinder Swindler. It's not again and again, not because the guy is perfect, but because the guy looks like he's the dude who fucks. That guy, that top four and a half percent guy is a guy who fucks. Women want to be with a man who other men want to be and other women want to fuck. That guy is a guy who fucks. The 10 percenters are guys who fuck. And who wants to fuck them? All the women want to get the one hundred percent of the women want to get with the four and a half percent of those guys. Really look at the statistics. So that's one piece. But I think another thing to really consider that that I think you kind of hit the nail on the head is that it is harder for men and women to find a good match. Yeah. There are many reasons for that. I think one reason is that so if we look at like what women tons of people on healthy gaming. Sorry. Today Oops, we my bad, my bad. Notice the notice the uh, the segue there to find a good match. Why is a good match the operative? Why is it not like, oh, uh, that's a good match. That's a good match. That's a good match. And that's a good match. And now I can vet between all of these, because if I don't, it's the most important decision of my life. Like there's such a lopsided gender ratio that it's still like closer to one to one mm -hmm. in, in some ways. It depends on the studies right, that you look at and stuff like that. So I think that this creates this idea that a lot of men have that like, oh my God, there's like these chads at the top that are like banging lots of girls. Yeah. I don't think the reality, another good example of this is most women, I want to say like statistics or historically somewhere around 70 to 80% of women will want to date a man who makes more money than they do. Mm -hmm. But 60% of college graduates are now women. Yeah. So what we're starting to see is as equality of income increases, that expectation becomes harder and harder to fill. So whatever the reason is, and they're okay. So let's halt right there. Now, what have I talked about? Now we're going to get back to the point of the, the super chat and everything else here. What have I told you guys about when it comes to like men being superfluous, right? What did I tell Dr. Phil? Sorry, I had to use Dr. Phil's name again. Um, what did I talk about when I said that? I said, men are superfluous and it, it was like I was speaking Swahili. They simply could not understand what I was fucking saying. I had to even tell them the definition of fucking uh, of, of superfluous. This is why men are superfluous. We can't find a good match. Why? Because you're superfluous. Because provisioning, protection, and parental investment, all those fucking important things that mate switching hypothesis depends on, is already made. It's already covered. That's why we're in. That's why we can't find a good match. That's why, because women earn six, actually they weren't, depending on the, 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 uh, the degree, in some cases they earn anywhere between 65 and 70% of higher, uh, educate of doctorates and master's degrees actually. But, uh, that being what it is, needless to say, women do so because they need that long-term security. They believe in that the empowerment narrative. And the reason they do is because they can't trust men. So if I can't trust men for my long-term security, I got to do it myself. If you can't get someone else to do it right, you got to do it yourself. Let's go get a doctorate. Let's go get a master's degree. Let's go do whatever. And whether they're useful or whether they're not is immaterial at this point. The reason they do that is for long-term security. What is that? Provisioning, protection, and parental investment. All of those qualities that the mate switching hypothesis says is the reason that that woman cheats says is the reason that the she's going to fall in love with a guy who can meet those criteria so a the marriage rate in the united states is at six per six six per one thousand people right now very very low it's not really so marriage and coupling and finding a good mate it's it's not even a good prospect for women much less men at this point because why would women want to get with a guy who doesn't provide 
protection, protection, provisioning, and parental investment, why would she bother doing that? So if the beta buck side of dual mating strategy is already taken care of, what's left? Alpha fucks, beta bucks, alpha fucks is the only thing left. Ergo, even the most educated, most brilliant, most, you know, got her game together and got her education down her business and everything else. That woman still wants a guy who looks fucking good still. And I'm going to prove it to you because I got a data set here to show you. Still wants a guy who and, the, and, and they focus on looks. Why? Because they already got it locked. They've already got long term security locked down or they believe the perception is that they do have it locked down. Women aren't cheating with guys who are ugly, who don't have fucking provisioning protection and parental investment. They're cheating on guys who look like fucking Jack Reacher. That's why. All kinds of challenges that women have as well. And they get tons of picks and all kinds of other things. Yeah. That's so a, yeah, it's challenge. definitely making it harder for men to date. Now that's just on the gender side, but there's a whole other set of things that's like screwing up dudes too. Which is that, you know, it, as men, like we have very poor emotional regulation skills. We're not really taught how to express emotions beyond mm -hmm. anger. Um, okay. Once again, approaching this from a female perspective, men are deficient in emotions. Anytime you hear your psychologist or psychiatrist, your fucking guru, your dating advice guy, whoever, or, or, or woman, anytime you hear men, especially men, but anytime you hear your guru put in no uncertain terms that the reason why men are fucked up is because they can't emote like women walk out the door. You're done. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about because men and women are different biologically, neurologically down to the down to the the cellular level men and women are different i've got dozens and dozens and dozens of of uh, studies and the, the comparisons it just what just in march there was two that were two that were released about the the differences in the wiring literally and they've been saying for years oh men and women the wiring's not are we're more alike than we are apart no we are way way more different than we are alike are we the same species? Yes, of course we are. But when it comes to how we go about, like how our brains are wired, we are much different. And the, pro the fact of the matter is, is that men do not have the same hardware to process emotions that women do. So to say that you're a fucking stunted uh, individual, and I mean that in the clinical sense, because you didn't cry at the end of fucking Titanic does not mean you have some sort of emotional intelligence problem. There's no such thing as emotional intelligence, by the way. It's made up fucking term by guys like this. There is no. And so what happens is and this is why this shit really pisses me off, because when we talk about men going through like contemplating suicide or or wanting to self delete after um, after being zeroed out, like like the like the 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 guy who super chatted in a little while ago. Why is it that men are eight times more likely to off themselves after they lose a job? Provisioning, protection, and parental investment. Because they know that if they ain't got that shit, she's going to, she can handle that her own and she can go fuck the top 10% guy if she wants to, or that's the perception anyways. Okay. You lose everything, everything you built up. I have to, I have to live my life to make this bitch happy. And now I've lost my job and she's more than likely because that's a precipitator of divorce, more than likely to leave me because provisioning protection and parental investment. And now I can't fucking make that. I'm, I can either reinvent myself or I can erase myself. That's what comes after a fucking zeroing out. So the, but the problem is, is it's not about mental health. Anthony Bourdain did not have a mental health problem. He had a blue pill ideology problem. He had a, a Pollyanna uh, soulmate myth problem. And that's what ultimately led to his demise. So when we're talking about men, you are never, Dr. Allah, Dr. K, you are never going to solve men's mental issues with female emotional therapy. It's not going to work. Men are not built, literally not built that way. We lack the same neural wiring and the same hardware. 
So to say, oh, men need to do go to therapy and, and, and do their, they need to become more emotionally available. All you're saying is that they need operant conditioning to be something that they were never meant to be. I'm going to, was it Aristophanes said this, even the wisest of state sages does not try to teach a crab to walk straight. You know what that means? That means that the crab's nature is to walk crooked, is to walk sideways, not straight. So when you are trying to do that, can you teach a crab to walk straight? Yeah, you can with great effort and with great operant conditioning, with positive reinforcement and negative punishment. You could probably do that. But was the crab ever meant that way? The crab's neural wiring was not meant to walk straight. It was meant to walk sideways. That's what I'm getting at. You can't teach a crab to walk straight. You shouldn't teach a crab to walk straight. It's your natural proclivity. Men do not process emotions, especially negative emotions like women do. But if your therapy is based and it works, hey, the, it works on women, it should work on men. All you're doing is admitting to your philosophy of the blank fucking slate. And that is a dead meme and has been a dead meme for a long fucking time. Walk out of that fucking place. If any guy ever tells you, oh, you need to get in touch with your emotions. We need emotional therapy. No, you tell, look him straight in the eye and you say, no, men aren't built that way. My brain chemistry does not work that way. My brain architecture is not that way. I don't have that hardware. Stop treating me as if I am a defective fucking woman. I, that we raise our boys like defective girls, your therapy presumes that I am a defective woman and is ineffective on what my problems happen to be. Go to the fucking gym, go to go, go fucking lift heavy things, get some testosterone replacement therapy. Trust me, go on TRT. Your outlook will, will change dramatically just inside of eight to 10 weeks. Garen fucking T. Um, we're unlikely, it's like hard for us to engage in psychotherapy, which I don't think is a weakness of men. I think there's some systemic biases yeah. in psychotherapy that are against men. No, they're not wired that way, you dumb. So if you look at studies on couples counseling, like you ask, ask men, why don't you want to go to couples counseling? And what they, what happens is they feel outgunned. Mm -hmm. So anytime they go see a couples counselor, their female partner, assuming a heteronormative relationship, knows how to articulate their feelings, and the man doesn't know how to do that. Yeah. So the he doesn't know how to do that because he lacks the hardware to know how to do that. And going to female counseling, of course he feels outgunned because he's speak he's in a stranger in a strange land and is expected to fluently speak womanese. It's not the case. We need to stop making fe the female experience the normative experience. You know why? We, and you know why that is such a controversial statement is because it implies that we need to start looking at the male experience as the primary experience, as the defining experience for culture, for our personal relationships, for our fucking religion, for our politics, everything else. If we focused on the male experience instead of the female, instead of that, you want to know why I, I keep saying, I keep harping on gynocentrism because we have consolidated, we've, we've, we've standardized the female experience as the normative experience and anything that is male that is, doesn't in any way complement that it does is in no way useful to that. That's toxic masculinity. That's when all this shit falls apart and it's falling apart for one reason you still believe in the blank slate. You still think that men and women emote the same. They don't. Stop it.